Hello and good evening. You are joining me on an absolutely stunning evening in the Banner Brekenyog, the Brecon Beacons National Park. We are heading towards a random little hill. I'll pop the name on screen because I really can't pronounce it. But it's 457 meters. I've never been up there before. Looks quite craggy on OS maps and there's a little trig point. But we are out to do a little camp in the classic Lan Shan 2 Pro tent. So it's a tent I'm probably going to sell, so I'll give it one last outing, a little goodbye camping it tonight. In terms of our location, to the south of us we've got Kadavar, a really wonderful hill, 485 metres, and then swinging looking west, I think you can just about see Kragalin in the distance. And the little hill in front that's lit up, if the camera can pick that up, that is the trig point in the hill we're heading towards. And if we swing round to sort of north, you've got Vanvar, and then over there you can't really see it, but hidden behind those two big lumps is Corn the Impenna Van. So we're not too far off being in the central Brecon Beacons tonight. This is, I don't think, a very well visited area, this particular part. So we're not expecting to see anybody. It should be really, really peaceful. My only concern is finding enough short grass to pitch what is a fairly substantial tent. It's got a quite a big footprint. Also got a new sleep mat to try out. The uh, Nemo tents are insulated. It's not the new model, it's last year's model, which doesn't have as high an R rating, but it was half price in the sale, because obviously they're trying to clear the old stock ready for the the new ones, so a bit of a bargain with that bit of gear. So our first obstacle is this little river. So we've got to try and get across the other side of that. There aren't any paths along here. This is open access land, so you are free to roam where you like. And we're just following sheep trails and heading roughly towards where I think the summit of this hill is. I've never walked this area before, so it doesn't appear to be anything marked on. OS maps looks particularly unfriendly. It's just your average, different levels of thick grass and the occasional bit of spongier, wetter ground. Because of the lack of paths, this is why you're not gonna see any muck up this place. And I think if you're gonna walk this hill normally, you probably approach it from the other side. So this should be a very lonely, restful little wild camp. So ticked off the first mile now. I think I'm pretty sure I can see the trig point proud against the sky. Not sure how much further it is to go. I'm not brilliant at estimating distances, but it is a very nice evening. It's a very pleasant walk. It's not too overgrown, and so far it's not been too boggy either, so no complaints about the route. Absolutely massive sinkhole. And looking back, you still see Cadavar, seeing a different angles of the central mountains and uh, it's getting quite warm now. It's definitely easier to walk on established paths than go across country like this but sometimes if you want to explore parts of the OS map that don't get many visitors this is what you just have to do. As usual I try and follow as many sheep trails as possible because they tend to avoid the boggy parts and the worst parts. And it's strange, every now and again, you seem to pick up a really big one, like a sheep highway, really well worn, and then it just fades into nothing. You end up crisscrossing lots of little micro paths. And we're in one of those sections now where it's just, <laughs> doesn't look very sheep mown at all here.
Well, after a pretty featureless mile and a half of walking, finally some sign of human life at some point. Looks a pretty old calm though. And there's no, no tracks here or anywhere around it. So it's a very little visited spot I'd imagine. But standing there, I can now see the trig point in front of us is not too far away, maybe half a mile, maybe a bit further. So maybe we'll be about two and a half miles by the time we get there. But luckily it's a beautiful evening and they forecast rain in the next hour or so. So as long as I get there before then and find somewhere to pitch up, should be fine, but beautiful evening for it. Well, the trig point is not far away now. And I'm very glad because it's an absolute slog walking on this stuff. Don't ever bring anyone on this kind of walk if they're not that massive fan of walking because they would just absolutely hate this. Just zero paths now. Just trudging through ankle deep growth. Really is leg sapping. And my only concern now is actually, is there going to be anywhere to pitch? I've never been here before. It's really, really overgrown. I've not seen anywhere on the entire walk since we left the little river where it's possible to really pitch a tent in any kind of comfort. So I'm just hoping somewhere around the summit, there's just somewhere to pitch a tent. Always is amusing me that you're in access land and there's a massive barbed wire fence Crossing the land with no crossing points doesn't exactly scream access land, does it? Made it through the fence. Views now, absolutely incredible. Amazing sky for it as well. So, Kadafar, looking right back south end to some of the bigger hills in South Wales. So I can see Minifaba Derm and Ifgeffin, right the way down to, it's like Garth Hill and all the other places. And then east, got Craggolin. Just loads and loads of amazing views. And then blasted in sunlight is the little trig point. I've not seen anywhere so far that we can pitch a tent. So fingers crossed now, really. Only 2.4 miles, but it felt like a lot longer. What a slog, but again, just a very different perspective in the, in the, in the Brecon Beacons. So one thing I love about coming to these random hills, you just see slightly different variations of the same views, different angles of mountains that you've walked, hills that you've traversed and spots you've visited. It just keeps things fresh. So even though I've walked huge swathes of South Wales, there's still a lot of spots this I've not visited where you can just come and take in the views and see something different. And I know rain's forecast. Um, it just gives the sky all sorts of different colors and textures and the landscape is dotted in sun. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it's not wonderful is my pitching options, which is looking pretty thin on the ground, unlike the grass and the overgrowth, which is looking pretty thick. So I've no idea quite what to do really, because there doesn't, doesn't seem any natural spaces as far as I can see that uh, we can pitch a tent. Possible pitching spot. Um, shame I haven't got a little lawnmower, but I guess that would uh, breach the uh, leave no trace policy, but possible spot. Just going to go and check this little lump over here, see if that's any good. If not, we'll come back up <laughs> and try and pitch there. Okay, it's not the perfect surface to pitch on, but I think it'll do. I've got to kick a lot of sheep back out of the way, but it's a lovely little crag. The views are amazing in every direction. I can see the sea right the way down there in that valley, recognize 
a few of the hills I walked in this area and the mountains and yeah this will do this will very much do and you can still just about see the trig point as well and the sunrise should be somewhere over here so yeah let's get the tent pitched before it starts raining some pretty ominous rain clouds drifting across now could have a bit of heavy rain heading this way so it's just started to rain so just going to come inside the tent and relax and uh, enjoy the views from the non-rainy side of the tent it is a really nice spot up here slightly overgrown i wish i had a little smaller tent it'd be much easier to pitch it but it is what it is at least uh, we've got loads of space to chill out if it does rain a bit heavier The tent now so it's getting quite dark so you can see just the amazing views we've got from this spot <laughs> and the uh, light rain that's sort of coming across every now and again it's raining a little bit now so you can see the tent at the top of this craggy little area it really is not the most amazing pitch in terms of grass but location wise it's brilliant i quite fancy coming here again it's such a great view so you can see up over there, about 150 meters away, is the uh, trig point. Banks of clouds up in the proper mountains, so Penelan Corndy, the highest points, really hidden in, in thick cloud now. And just a lovely evening. So it's one of those evenings that just wild camping is all about. Got here, found the place to pitch, could see the rain coming over, got in the tent, chilled out, had a couple of ciders, had some food tent just flapping away, a little bit of light rain on it. Still able to see all the views in that direction over there from inside the tent because the rain was flooding from one side so I had one door open. Just completely relaxed. Forgot about YouTube, forgot about filming, just utterly enjoying the moment. It is such a strange feeling to be up, like, up here. I had to almost force myself out. I was kind of, had the chance to go wild camping and I kind of, do I want to go, where can I go? Kind of um and about locations. But once you get up here, it just, it's just all, it all makes sense. But sometimes when you're not here and you're in the process of trying to get ready and stuff, there's just so many reasons not to do it. But now I'm here, these amazing views, this light, the tent all pitched, it just makes perfect sense. So I'm going to say good night, I think, because I'm just going to get in the tent and get ready to go to sleep and just relax, really. So just enjoy it. So, yes, <laughs> barring some crazy failure in the night, I will see you in the morning.
Well, it's nearly ten past nine now, so I have had a lovely lie in because I've been trying to wait for it to stop raining, but the forecast seems pretty clear it's not going to stop raining until maybe gone ten, and even then, it's dubious. So it's not terrible out. Visibility is pretty good, it's not uh, completely clagged in, it's just been raining um, pretty constantly most of the night. So at least I know that the tent is waterproof, so my seam sealing job has done the trick. So there's no water ingress, it's been a very comfortable night. Um, had no condensation either because it's been a decent breeze all night, the airflow has been good. So really impressed with the Lanshan 2 Pro single skin tent because other times I use it there's been loads of condensation because it's been really still nights and stuff but with the breeze last night no condensation loads of space really comfortable sleep was perfect temperature with the gear that I was wearing in the sleeping bag I'm using so just a really really comfortable sleep and I had a really really long lie in so the only thing now is going to be miserable walking back to the car because obviously no paths so very long overgrown grass which is now absolutely soaking wet I haven't got any um, waterproof trousers or anything so I'm just going to get absolutely soaked walking back to the car which is <laughs> not the best luckily I've got I've got a pair of shorts in the car so I can change and I've got a spare pair of uh, walking shoes as well so it's not the end of the world it's just not going to be very much fun walking back so I guess I've just got to get packed away and um just get moving because otherwise I'd just be here all day and I forgot my charging cable for my phone so I've got plenty of power banks and batteries and stuff but no way of charging my phone so I can't even sit here and wait out watching stuff on Netflix because I've only got 15% battery left so yeah I always seem to forget something on recent camps so yeah that's not good but yeah just going to say face the weather and uh, get out there and get a bit damp. Maybe the weather's going to be kind to me. There are some absolutely fantastic hills and views from this location. Got the reservoir up there, Van Vaar, Van Neef, Van Clear. Up to the trig point here, all looking nice. A really clear day down the Cadavar, all the way down the valleys little wisps of cloud over Cragolin, which is the highest point of the South Wales coalfield, just over 600 metres. Just a absolutely wonderful location. What a great place to pitch. And looking down and around this little hill, there's other little craggy spots where there's potentially little places to pitch as well in different areas. So yeah, good location to come to. Because we've got really good visibility today as well, it looks like um, fingers crossed the range is going to be light and on and off because there's no massive rain clouds on the horizon as far as I can see although I've probably just absolutely jinxed myself by saying that but no it could have been a lot worse could have been clanked in no views really heavy rain but just got to take the tent away pack that away and then start trudging back the only issue is my mountain warehouse waterproof boots are no longer waterproof really so wet grass just absolutely kills them so this wet long grass i reckon five minutes of walking my feet are going to be soaking wet so yeah i must reproof them at some point that's gonna be my next effort to try and actually reproof a pair of boots but no let's get packed away and let's start heading back because it is gone 10 o'clock now almost so it has been a very very leisurely morning so far all packed away. What didn't look like a promising pitch turned out to be absolutely fine. So I'm going to say goodbye to the views and uh, start heading back. About a quarter of a mile to this trig point and I can already feel my feet getting wet from the uh, wet grass and my trousers are soaked and I was on a pretty good sheep trail as well so we'll be leaving the sheep trails now pretty much to go back into the open country I try and take 
a direct route back to the car. So, yeah, just going to enjoy it because it is a nice day. There's a few rain clouds and a few rain showers coming over now, so it's going to get a bit heavier, but no, it's a good way to start the day, a bit of fresh air, a bit of exercise. And uh, if you're going to come and do camps like this and weather like this, unless you bring all your full waterproof gear and stuff, you are going to get a bit wet. So, yeah, accept it, embrace it, and let's keep going. little progress update my legs <laughs> are soaked and it's gradually creeping up towards my waist but it's pleasant walking really just following completely random sheep trails so taking a different route to what we took yesterday just meandering along there is a bit of a route marked on the OS map that cuts across somewhere down here so I'm hoping to intercept that my phone is still off because I've got hardly any battery left so I'm saving it just in case there's any kind of emergency so just wandering around really <laughs> it's all good visibility today so i can i can see the road on which i'm parked in the distance so i'm not going to get lost in any way but i can imagine on a really claggy day here when there's poor visibility you'd get you get a bit confused because it's pretty samey landscape there's not a great deal here and I think I can maybe see this little track down ahead somewhere so I'm hoping that one of these sheep trails will take me down to it but it has been a very pleasant walk so far and the occasional bit of light rain so it could be a lot worse I mean it is July <laughs> it could be summer as well but this year so far has just been pretty grim in terms of weather it's not even that warm <laughs> I mean it's kind of, even the days when it is a bit sunny, it's still not exactly summer. So we're really hoping to get some summer in Wales at some point. I've got some really lightweight gear I want to try out, but it needs to be warm for that. So <laughs> at the moment we're sticking to slightly warmer gear. Picked up this nice farm track now, so walking is much, much easier. So it should take us most of the way back to the little river we've got across and then directly back to the car. So much, much better pace now. My legs were just starting to dry off as well. <laughs> and now <laughs> I'm absolutely soaked. This is a beautiful spot in the Bracken Beacons because because it's private land that's fenced off, you've actually got some trees which as you can hear attracting the buzzards that's the buzzard chirping and you've got these little rivers and streams all meeting up at this point and just a wonderful spot and really accessible from the road as well so looks like a potential lovely little camping spot here just need a, a broom to sweep all the sheep muck off and then you'd be able to pitch up nicely, sheltered, hidden from the world, but surrounded by water.
top tip to my future self, if you're going to go wild camping where you've got to cross a river on the way back, check the weather forecast. If it rains overnight quite a lot, <laughs> all of the stepping stones you've used to get across are flooded on the way back. So I've just had to basically just wade straight through the river. So <laughs> my, my boots are now absolutely full of water sloshing around. Um, so I'm very glad I got a spare, some spare socks and spare shoes and spare shorts in the car because I'm absolutely soaked now. So yeah, I didn't think that one through. I didn't really check the weather forecast before I went out last night, but yeah, <laughs> crossing this river on the way back, just impossible without just wading through it. The one good thing about being this soaking wet in terms of feet and trousers is I can just wade back through the river and not, not be too worried about it. But no, that was a, a beautiful camp, lovely location, really quite felt like out in the wilderness in terms of how difficult it was to get to and how just how few people must walk up to that point. But no, it's going to be sad to say goodbye to Lanshan 2 Pro, but I'll be selling a lot of my tents now. I'm going to definitely try and downsize my stupidly big gear collection down to a few tents, which I really know how to use and how to pitch properly and I've got them for certain conditions and stuff and just have have what I need rather than just being addicted to buy, buying random tents. Obviously I'll still buy random tents but the idea being I'll try and sign them on a bit quicker. But this seems like a beautiful spot to finish the video so if you have made it this far as usual a huge thanks for watching and uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel if you're not already then you'll see me out and about in more adventures with more gear I've got loads of gear reviews coming up as well because I've been using a lot of new gear recently and stuff. So, yeah, a huge thanks for watching as always and hopefully I will catch you in the next one.